Hi again, everyone. Well, today I'm going to be unpackaging and installing my latest addition to my YouTube environment, a 4K60 video capture card. It will replace my existing video capture card, which only supports high def. As a matter of fact, I still have the box for it. It's called a Colossus 2, and it worked well. I don't particularly like the software for it. It doesn't have a lot of features to it. And it also runs into some syncing with the sound issues that cause me difficulty during editing. I want to replace this. My videos have actually changed their looks lately. The changes are primarily going to 4K. And going to 4K videos has a lot of potential pitfalls to it. And one is to make sure that I have a capture card that can capture stuff that I'm doing on another PC, which is a lot of what I've been doing in my videos up to this point, and I plan on continuing to doing that going forward. So let me open this up. This box open now. Oh, that's a lot of packaging to this. Oh, look what we got in here. Well, first of all, it looks like it's got a really nice fancy case badge. That's interesting. I'll actually put it on my computer case. No problem with that. Oh, in case you have a smaller PC that requires a short version of the bracket that holds it into its PCI slot. The same thing that's here. This is obviously the larger version of it that's on it. And this is a shorter one they give you as well. And then of course, the actual Elgato card. Let me see, is there anything else underneath here? Oh, that would give me a nice uh, HDMI cable that goes along with this. That's good. For the card itself, let's see what we got here. I'm going to actually leave it in the static free bag after I take a quick look at it. Just to make sure, make sure let's take a look, make sure there's no damage before you go take your whole PC apart. I did see online that there was a lot of complaint the fact that this card didn't have a nice bracket, back bracket to it. But I think the idea here is it might, this might actually help it get a little bit cooler. Very small, compact. It only has an in and out HDMI. Okay, put it back in here and let's get my computer apart. Okay, so what I decided to do was just pull my computer back away from its cabinet. So this is the back of my cabinet that I have it installed in right now. I didn't want to pull it all out the front like I showed in the previous video. I took the side panel off and now I can see the Colossus card. This way I can just get to the card itself. I have my screwdriver ready to take off the screw that holds the Colossus card in place. There's nothing connected to the outside of the Colossus card right now. Get this off of here and I should be able to just take this thing right out. Double check to make sure that's the slot that I want. Actually, I think I want to put it in the slot below that. So let me disconnect this thing here as well. My nine pin serial port adapter that I put in. Never used it, but I have it in here. To allow me to connect up to something serially if I happen to ever need to do that. The Elgato requires the additional pins in order to transfer the data. That that little slot that the Colossus was in would not properly support or I could put it in the slot above as well. There's a slot right above that. That's a 16 pin. Matter of fact, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to take this one off. Get this out of here. I like about this case. It has nice real brackets to it. Now if I put the Gato into its position, I'm going to put it in into the 16 bit slot that's right above where the Colossus happened to be installed. There we go. So it fits right in there. There's plenty of room now to keep it cool. We have quite a bit of space between that card and the video card. We've seen a little bit better in that angle here. There's an Elgato, and then the video card is right above that, the 1070 that I have. So you can see there's plenty of space available to it at this point. Get these back in. Do this one first. I'll put in the blank. And then I'll put a nine port zero bracket back where it was in the bottom slot here. I'll go ahead and tighten all three of those. And now we're good. Got the Elgato installed. Let me get the side panel, put it back on. And there we go. Let me get the two screws that hold this in place. And the install is done.
Okay, I was starting to put it all away and I was looking for the software and this thing does not come with the software. However, on the inside cover of the box, it tells us to go and download the software from Elgato.com Gaming Download. So that's what I'll have to do next. Okay, so I'll come in here, go to Elgato.com forward slash gaming forward slash download. And we'll see what I got. Looks like I have several things to choose from here. 4K capture utility for Windows, which is what I think I want. I guess let me try to 4K capture for Windows. Run that one. Other agreement. I do not want to share my data right now, so I'm going to uncheck that box. Install it there. Install. that. I think that's it for the uh, software download. Now let me close this and look what I got. Uh, I don't see a lot of new icon. Well I do but they pushed them all over here. 4k capture utility and uh, that should do it. But you will see me using this in future videos when I am using connectivity to another computer whether it's my server another Windows box or whatever. So just be on the lookout for that going forward. The 4K capture utility from Elgato. So let's run that. And what you see in the screen here is a connection that I've made to my second computer, my retired PC that I had ready for doing certain types of experiments. So this is actually what's running on it right now. It's connected up to my channel and taking a look at my latest released video. What I need to show you though is some basic configuration. So if I go into this little star, sort of like a flower up in the right hand corner and click on it, you get the actual configuration screen. Let's start with the general. Now since that particular PC is only set for 1080p, therefore the Elgato defaults to that. I can't pick a different one. So there's not much you can should do here except maybe check for updates. Now I do have it already auto checked. So if I don't want it to auto check, I could uncheck that, but I think that's good enough. But let me just check it anyway. And it says that I have the latest version. Device. Well, the device that I'm using is just a one 4K60 Elgato, the Mark II, which is a smaller version with a few extra features. I could actually have multiple capture cards in the PC, and this would see them. Whether it would work with them or not is a different question. But definitely, if I had multiple Elgatos, it should work fine. It shows the latest firmware. It shows that the video input from the other PC is 1080p60. These are pretty much the defaults. How do you want the color? There's different options. I'm not going to get into all of this. I did go and visit the Elgato site again to see if there's a manual, and unfortunately, I couldn't find one. So there might be or there might not. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place. So let's just jump right to the picture. Suppose you wanted to change some of the colors or you wanted to change the brightness or contrast. Well, you can do that on this screen here, you know, going from different hue from, you know, red to green generally is how that's going to go. In recording, you have a few extra options here. Obviously, I could tell it to now capture in a higher resolution, even though the input device is only at 1080p or I could force it to a lower resolution as well. I'm going to change these. What I really want to do here is go right to the same place that I go for everything else for my video work. And I actually made a subdirectory called Elgato 4K60. So I'm going to set that as the selected folder for the library location. And I'll do the same thing for the screenshot location. Go to my drive E, video. I want to go to the Elgato 4K60. I want to select that folder. So now I set them both to my drive E, which is where I'd rather that they default to. You can put them anywhere you want, but that's where I'm focused on right now. And let's see, you can see the mic. You can actually set the input volume to different values. Amplitude, I always like 95%. It seems to be a pretty good value most of the time. It did automatically identify my microphone that I have a USB audio microphone. That's my lapel mic that I use for most videos when I'm doing a screen capture and it's showing me the actual amplitude signal that's coming in from that lapel mic. And with that, I can actually say uh, okay, or if I change anything, apply would be something I would do. So let's apply it. I have to restart it, okay. 
restart the flashback. That's an option where it can keep track and you can back up on it. I'm not going to get into any detail on that. Maybe if you Google it, you'll find the manual somewhere. But I'm done with this. I'll say OK, and it's dropped. So now it has my whole PC captured in this window. If I go over to the mouse on the other PC and move it around and try different things on that PC, it would show that they directly correlate to it. One thing I like about this over the Colossus is the response. The Colossus had a significant delay when I moved the PC screens around. I would see those screens significantly delayed in their refresh on my capture screen. So this one's much better. So let's go back to here. If I'm going to do a capture, I have to click on this little button down at the bottom. Start, stop recording. And that'll start capturing what's on the screen. But before I do that, I want to point out two little buttons over here to the right. Right now, I have the microphone turned off on the capture. So if I were doing a capture, right now I'm doing a screen capture using a different program called Bandicam. But if I were going to use this to do a capture, of another device like it's connected to right now and I want it to be able to talk while it's doing that I would have to turn on the microphone I won't do that now because I think there'll be a conflict the same thing for the computer if I want to hear what the computer is saying or whatever I'm connected to it could be a gaming console it doesn't have to be a computer I would have to turn this on as well in order for it to be appearing here on the main screen now I got the duplicate voice because the computer itself is now speaking as well so I'll turn this one off and I'll turn the main computer off as well or the, the computer that I'm capturing as well. I'll turn off the sound. Ideally, you should turn the sound off on the particular monitor. I didn't bother doing that, but I could do that. I have a separate screen that this whole image that you see here in this window is being displayed from and I can actually turn that monitor's sound off. So with that, that's really all I wanted to cover in terms of using the software. It's pretty straightforward, very similar to other software that I've used. Well, that concludes my video on installing the Elgato 4K60 video capture card. It'll help improve some of my future captures and bring them up to the quality of some of the other video that I've done. So it'll be a big boost. Anyway, if you got something out of this, or if you just found it enjoyable in any way, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. My little head pops up here. Just click on it and follow along, and it'll help this channel out immensely. Thanks a lot.